This is hook lift jumping. What's up guys? Today we're talking about hook lift jumping. It can also be called hook jumping, bar jumping, bar slipping. And what we're talking about right here, up on the hook, is when that hook bar jumps out of the saddle it's supposed to sit in. All right, so now the question is why does this happen? And I think the number one reason why this happens is because these dumpsters are meant to slide on these rails and these rollers. And it could happen from all types of different things, but I think the number one thing is you're going down the road, somebody pulls out in front of you, whatever it is, and you hit your brakes, and then that hook will jump out of where it's supposed to sit. The next question is, is it dangerous? It definitely could be dangerous. There's a few things that factor into that, but I think the biggest thing is it's more of a dumpster problem than it is a hook lift problem. It's probably more to do with the way your dumpster was fabricated than the design of your hook lift truck. <laughs> Feel me coming out of the bathroom? How's it going? All right, guys, what I'm talking about first and foremost is this bar. This bar right here is a two inch bar. I have seen these as small as inch and a half, which is a pretty small diameter. This bar is a two inch. I'm here to tell you guys right now, it's not big enough. Two and a half inch, okay? So if you can see the difference on these, this is a two and a half inch bar, which is considerably thicker. This is a two inch bar. That right there is 90% of your problem right there. If you're running anything less than a two and a half inch, that's a lot of your problem. Guys, besides the bar being two and a half inches in diameter, there's two other very important parts. One is a 33 degree angle. What I'm talking about is this bar has different angles that it can get welded on. The ideal degree is 33 degrees. That's this. So you can see how far up this is sitting. That's at a 33 degree angle, okay? I'm gonna show you some that are much higher and much less real quick. Look at the height of this one. This is much higher than 33 degrees. This angle right here. It causes a problem. Even though it's a two and a half inch, this is much too high in the air. This should ideally be brought down and rolled forward a little bit to make that 33 degree. The next part on this, guys, is the band angle, okay? The band angle on this, according to Matt Corp, Raider and Jose, who build the best can on the planet, this needs to be a 30 degree band, okay? A 30 degree band sitting at 33 degrees. And the reason that's so important, guys, if I can simulate the hook like on a pal finger, this is the back of the hook, this is the thumb on the front. If you don't have these at the right angle, when they sit on the ground, you can't release out of, out of them. That's why this is so important, guys, and this is where all the hook jumping actually takes place. Because of the fact you're running a smaller bar, you're not set at a 33 degree angle, and this band angle that it sits in here is not 30 degrees. Those are magic numbers, guys. Look, do yourself a favor. Get a can from somebody that actually understands the dynamics of the hook, and you're gonna prevent yourself a lot of headache from that starting to slip the hook. So one of the things that manufacturers do um, when they put a smaller bar on, this is a little bit of cheat code. They, they weld this plate on the back, and if you can see that this plate is all scratched up, what that is from is when we go to jib back, that front thumb slips out because this is only a two inch bar. So the front thumb slips out and the back of the jib hits this, and that's what's actually pushing the dumpster back. The correct way is your front thumb grabs that dumpster and slides it back. So anytime you see a bar on it like this, 
The manufacturer knows that they have a problem with the bar. They know they put too small of a bar on it. They know it's not at the right angle or the right pitch. And so they put this cheat plate on the back of it. So the back of your jib actually hits this and this is what's pushing it. Now there's one other way that those guys cheat that and I'm gonna show you how that is. Okay, here's another example of another manufacturer that did not put in this plate back here. So when that thumb slips off, they have to have another way to push the can. So they install these bumpers down here. If you have a can that has one of these bumpers, it does the same thing. The back of the, and the bottom of the jib is hitting this because it knows your thumb is gonna slip off this. Okay guys, these are little things that you can do. I, just so many guys in Facebook groups are having issues with it slipping off. And then what happens is if you don't have the plate behind here and you don't have this bumper on the bottom, it comes off here, now your jib's in here, now you're really in trouble because when you go to lift it up, it won't lift the can up, and now your can is wedged on your jib. This is what's happening to guys, and guys can't figure it out. They get on Facebook, they're yelling, it's a Stellar, it's a Powell Finger, it's a swap loader, it's whatever. It's not, it's your can. Your can was not designed properly. And to properly do this, I'm gonna show you the right way to manufacture these Go to the right manufacturer to start with, and you won't have any of these issues. I'm back with our Matt Corp cans. Two and a half inch, 33 degree angle, 30 degree bend. This is how they should be built. I really like this style can because my thumb is gonna do the, all the pushing on the bar. If you look at the back of this, I've never once, there's no scratches on this, so I've never once slipped off my bar. But if I did slip off my bar, the back of my jib would hit this plate that Mac has put on it. Because let's face it guys, hooks wear. They wear out a lot, it, it happens. It, it's a wear item, it's a wear component. And when it wears out to the point, you gotta cut it off and re-weld another one on. Hopefully if you're doing that, you made a lot of money moving a lot of cans. But that's what this plate is designed for. Yes, it has strength and integrity in it and it's engineered into it, but it's also that if that thumb does come down for whatever reason and slip on here, the back of your jib is gonna hit this and that's gonna push the can so that your jib, your full hook can never get caught underneath there. Guys, this makes a lot of sense to you guys that have had it happen. Now what I'm gonna do though, we're gonna take a second, I'm gonna have Sean show you how we fix this problem if you get a can that has jumped this, how to get out from underneath it. All right guys, so this is how I was taught. So you can see how that bar is sitting right on top of your thumb on your hook. The way I was taught is once you start, once you jib back and you start raising the can up, you just feather it back just a little bit so that hook sits that back down into that saddle because like with these concrete cans right here, they can weigh five, seven tons sometimes, and that's a lot of weight. And it can be really violent if you just start raising that can and you get all that weight to drop down and it'll rock your truck pretty good. All right, so what, what we're gonna have Sean do is, we're gonna have Sean jib this back a little bit to simulate how we do it at a dump site. Sean, go ahead and jib it back. Okay, so if you guys notice, that bar, just like Sean explained, is still sitting on that front thumb. So what we do, and how we taught Sean to do this is, to start to raise it up. We're gonna raise it up ever so little bit, and we're just gonna kinda, almost like bounce it a little bit, and we're trying to talk that hook back into the bottom of that saddle. Go ahead, Sean. Okay, well done, Sean. So as you guys can see, it doesn't get very far off the truck and Sean's already got it to sit back down in that saddle. Now Sean can go ahead and complete a cycle. Sean, go ahead and dump it. Sean can complete a cycle on it, safely knowing that that can is not at risk of coming off that hook at all. Okay, Sean, 
That's good. Let's go set it right here. And I want you to pick that furthest 30 up. So as you guys can see, as this is lowering down, that bar fits nicely in that. But remember guys, this is a two inch bar. So now as it comes down, that's a two, that's a two and a half, or excuse me, a two inch bar that sits right in there. Now I'm gonna show you the difference in what a two and a half inch bar looks like. As Sean's backing up now, what we're gonna do is, this is a matte cork can, this is a two and a half inch bar that has all the right angles on it. Now, as we pick that up, you guys are gonna notice when this slides down in the hook and it's in the travel position, how much better a two and a half inch rides down in the bottom part of that saddle, in that bottom part of that saddle over a two inch. Look at how much tighter that is on the bottom. Now as you pull forward and jib forward, and usually guys, the issue isn't jibbing forward, the issue is jibbing back. So I'm gonna have Sean go ahead and jib it back now. It's gonna show you where that front thumb is gonna catch that front bar. And it, push, and it pushes it back. All right, Sean, jib it forward again. That's why you guys want a two and a half inch bar with all of the right angles. It is imperative to be safe and to be successful. All right, guys, that's this episode of hook lift jumping. Biggest takeaways to remember, just a real quick recap on it. If you're having problems with your dumpsters jumping that hook or getting wedged behind the hook, it's probably not your, your hook lift system problem. More than likely, it's a can issue. We showed you a couple ways that you can fix it. We've heard of guys putting block of wood behind it. Yeah, that's great to get you out of a bind, but you still haven't fixed the problem. So make sure, guys, when you're ordering cans, two and a half inch bar. If any manufacturer is trying to sell you something less than a two and a half inch bar, that's a red flag. Two and a half inch bar, get your 33 degree angle on there and get your 30 degree bend angle in there. Guys, saves a lot of headache, a lot of problems down the road. And let's just face it, that's a lot more safe. Special thank you to the team over at Matt Corp in Indianapolis. Raider and Jose provided us with the technical questions on, or the, the technical answers on this with the degrees and the bends in the bar. They've been a great asset. Guys, if you're looking for the very best dumpsters in the industry, Matt Corp. I'll have Casey throw up Raider's cell phone number. Call Raider at home on a Saturday night. I'm sure he loves it. Call him on a Sunday, order cans. No, I'm just kidding. Respect his privacy, but we're gonna throw up his number so you guys can get directly to Raider for all of your dumpster needs. But guys, special th shout out Sean. Made his YouTube debut today. I think he did a great job. Uh, appreciate all the support, guys. Thanks to all the subscribers and everybody that continues to watch. Hey guys, you can catch me, Sean, and Sticky in Tampa at Joe Maxco's event coming up on Friday. Nope, it's Saturday. Saturday, November the 2nd. That's right. Saturday, November the 2nd, the three of us will be in Tampa. Come by, say what up to us. We're gonna have some swag to give away to everybody. This is gonna be a great event that these guys have put on down there. Also, it's a really nice way to show your support to the guys down in Florida that have been busting their ass for 30, the last 30 days because of the multiple hurricanes that have rolled through there. We'll catch you guys in Tampa. We'll see you at the event. <laughs>